Um, but the concessions they put in this memorandum of under of agreement, which again, like Dan, I also, as I've said, want to see our officers compensated more, but I don't think this approach fixes any problem actually. Um, they included things like longevity pay. They included um, adjusting what the overtime rate is. They included raising the base salary. And my immediate other concern was that if we do this for one union, will we not have a knock on the door in about five minutes from the firefighters and their union saying like, hey, we want some parity here. Like if you're giving that to those guys, we'd like the yeah, same good, thing. Good point. Jim, Jim, Jim's numbers are fiction. There's no yeah. way he, without the, the budgetary expertise, with such a complicated document could come up with accurate numbers in that short of a period. I, they're, they're just pure fiction. And my guess is they're going to go up. What, what you said in my own words, it seems like Jim Montanino was almost obsessed with ending the 12 hour shifts. Uh, he cited safety, but he fails to realize the state police have been on 12 hour shifts for 20 plus years. So many other police agencies are on 12 hour shifts. So he cited one study, but in any event, that's what he wanted and fine. But the PBA was like, okay, you want those back? We have a right to them. You have to buy those back. And buy he did. <laughs> Boy, did, did he bring out the wallet. And that's the problem. Now, listen, I am for, uh, for those that don't know me well, I'm not only a former state trooper, but I'm the former trooper's PBA union president. So I am for this, for the police officers, not just because they they, they get a lot more money, and they do. It's it's because I think Sar I'm, my heart's in Saratoga. Uh, the wealth of the Capital District in many cases is in Saratoga. I think the Saratoga Springs Police Department should be the highest paid in the Capital District. Uh, that's part of me, uh, just my own personal thing. But also I think it will benefit the city. That Jim Montanino in last night's meeting did lay out quite nicely why that can benefit the city, why that can save the city money. Uh, to train police officers is tremendously expensive because you're you're paying them for nine months when they, they don't give you any service. They're either, they're either in the academy or in field training. They're, they're, they're just in training. They can't handle anything on their own. And so you're paying them for all that time, not only their salary, but their benefits. Right. And um, sometimes they wash out of the academy. You pay them for five months and they either flunk out, they do something really stupid at the academy, they do something really stupid on the weekend, and they're fired. And so you pay them for five months and you've got nothing on your return. But if you well, have a well-paid, well-managed, and that's another th thing we'll get to, uh, police department, uh, they can attract lateral transfers from other police departments. So you get experienced, vetted police officers that might have to do some crossover field training for two weeks. They got to know the city. They got to know the, the dispatch system. The so, even though I'm for this, but that can be done in probably two weeks. Nobody is. is. And then you're including Jim Montanino, understands what's in that 32 page package. And to our commenter, Chaz, yeah, he, he makes some good points. There, there probably needs to be a, a public hearing. Um, oh, yeah. And they need to understand, they need to own this. They need to know exactly what, where every dime they, and the last time they talked to next year was as far as they need to know five years out as, as Robin, as you and I talked, yeah. they need to know 10 years out. They, and Jim Montanino went into those negotiations, I believe without, without Manita, obviously, without anybody from her staff, I think without anybody from HR, how headstrong could you be to do that and not bring in the expertise that, Jim, you've been in office four months. You're not a you're not a budget guy. You're not a financial guy. You're not an HR guy. How do you go in there alone? Maybe he, he said the attorneys were with him part of the time, but the attorneys have limitations. You need the ex experts in city hall to come in there, and then you break and you caucus and you say, "Well, that's a bad deal because," or "That's a good deal because." Whatever. There are I don't six, think Jim seven, did any eight, of that. either increased and or new categories of compensation in there. Again, that I'm for. But nobody in City Hall, only because they've only had this for a day or two now, and but Jim for longer, really understands that. And they need to go deep and wide and, and long yeah. and understand that every which way in contract negotiations, uh, when I did it with the state of New York, now they had a full staff that could run these numbers 16 different ways, and they knew what it was going to cost them. And uh, I don't know that the city's done that yet. They, need, they haven't had time to, other than Jim, but they need to do that, uh, to do their due diligence. Again, I'm for yeah. this generally tentatively but i want to know what this is going to cost the city and nobody knows at this point 